All right, guys, we're almost there. So we've got our step definitions done. Uh, so next thing we need to do is our step execution. All right, so come over here. We've got another function here. All right, so remember for any of these guys, we're adding a new block, right? And then adding a function. And then for this one, it's called uh, step execution. Let's move this bad boy over. Let's go online. Okay, let's scroll up to the top and we'll see everything that's going on here. So in this case, um, it says that in the first network, right, our basis conveyors and lid conveyors uh, are going to be on, right? So we're in manual mode here. Let's, uh, let's press the, the start push button. And currently we are in step zero, right? So current steps is zero. Uh, and it's saying if it's equal to one, then set the lid conveyor and set the basis conveyor, okay? Then you'll see for step two, that we are resetting those conveyors. So here, all we're doing is for each step, we're now executing what we wanted to do. We had the step definition before, we defined exactly what needed to happen. And then this is simply just, is it in start mode? Yes. Is, it, uh, is this current step at one? Yes. Okay, set the conveyor and set, set the, the lids conveyor and set the basis conveyor. So we'll do that now. Okay, so those guys are set. Beautiful. Okay, so that was set and you saw that it reset right away, right? Remember that um, in the manual mode, we didn't want to be able to have to press the push button in order to reset the conveyors. So in this case, uh, step number two is start mode is true. The current step is equal to two. Uh, and then here, lid at place and base at place, that is this sensor right here and this sensor right here. And we talked about this in the previous video that we want to go for the negative edge there, right? So we want the fact that it goes from, uh, from a zero to a one and then back down to a zero, right? So this had to set to a one and then go down to a zero. Um, we're looking for uh, the end trig for each of these guys, the negative trigger, right? There's memory bits for each of these guys. Make sure to make use of separate memory bits for each one. And at that point, we reset each of those conveyors. Okay, so we're currently on step number two. Step number three uh, is that um, we have the clamp lid and clamp base that we're going to uh, going to set. Okay, but we have to um, press the push button again, get that one shot through, uh, and then we'll find that it goes to step number three. So doing that, let me see if I can scroll up here and back a bit so we can see that. So doing that now, beautiful. Okay, so those guys are now set. Okay, step number four is that we wanna move the Z axis down. Okay, so again, each of these guys uh, have the start mode and then when step four happens, then set, move Z. So doing that now, beautiful. Okay, step five, I wanna grab the lid. Okay, so again, start mode, once it gets to step five, then set, step data grab, All right? So all of these guys are in our step data. So they're all available. Uh, right here, right? Our step data is move X, move Z, grab, lids conveyor, all of these guys, right? So we're basically setting these these Boolean values and then these Boolean values will ultimately turn on our, our outputs. So within the, uh, the step execution here, we're not actually turning on outputs yet, right? All we're doing is setting those bits within that data block. Okay, step number five, we wanna grab uh, the lid. So we're gonna turn on the vacuum there. Beautiful. Okay, next thing we wanna do for step number six is to release the, uh, the clamp. So let's do that now. Okay, and if we scroll down here, step number seven is to uh, move the Z off, right? So stop that from being energized. So we'll do that now. So waiting for step seven here. Beautiful. Okay, moving down our next step, step eight is to move X. So we're gonna move that out, right? That's gonna turn on or set our step data, move X. So doing that now, beauty. Uh, and then down here, um, we have the start mode. Uh, once it gets into uh, step number nine, then uh, we're going to have a timer turn on. So I needed a, a second here because it looked like between step eight and step nine, that it was just smashing into here. So I needed a second for it to lift up and then I could move it over, right? So that's why I've put in uh, this timer right here. Again, usually when you're using a timer, um, you are kind of fudging it or like 
You just don't have like another option. In this case, I couldn't think of another option here. Um, it, what it was doing was it was going step eight, it was going uh, step eight, step nine. So it was literally trying to lift it up, but then moving to step nine and smashing into the side here. So once step nine happens, this timer will turn on. Uh, this is a, uh, an on delay timer. It's only for one second. And then once that timer has timed out, then I'm going to set uh, the move Z. Okay, so I need that time to move across with the X, and then I'm going to um, to let this push down. Okay, so that's why I'm making use of the timer here. So doing that now, so there's that delay there, right? It didn't go down right away. It took a second to uh, to happen. Okay, uh, by right, like watching the video before, maybe a timer was needed here as well for move X, right? Because when you watch it, it kind of like goes up and across. Right, so possibly to create a little bit more um, seamless movement, I would put another timer in here uh, and have that timer have its output and then turn on uh, move X. Okay, uh, next thing is to um, turn off the grab lid. So I had the issue where the, um, the suction was releasing prior to me doing the full motion here. So again, I've got another timer here for one second. Once it times out, then it's actually going to release the grab. Okay, so that's happening now. Beautiful, okay, so now we've released the, the grab. Uh, next thing is we need the clamp base off. So step 11 is clamp base off. Again, these steps, each step in the execution uh, is matching with the definition that we had before, right? So step 11, inner step definition is also clamp base off. So we're pressing the button now, and now that is reset, beautiful. Okay, uh, next thing we need to, uh, is we're going to um, do two things. We're going to move the Z up and then move the X back. Okay, in order to do that, then I need, uh, I need some, some time in order to, uh, to do that. So um, I'm going to move the Z up, right? I'm gonna reset that. But again, it's gonna smash into here if I reset both of them at the same time. So I need a second uh, for it to, uh, to time out and then I'm going to move the X back, right? So one second up and then move the X back. Okay, so doing that now, one second up, now move it back. Okay, so hopefully you see why the timers are required here. Okay, and then the next point here, uh, the positive raised basis is going to move up. Beautiful, okay, so that one's set. So you'll see here that I'm setting the bits within the data block but I'm not setting the outputs. These are then controlling uh, the outputs. Okay, so uh, step number 14, bid base conveyors and lid conveyors are both going to turn on. Okay, beauty, they both turn on. And I didn't want the operator to have to like click this a number of times in order to get the timing proper. So we saw that um, the next steps happen on their own, right? When I'm in manual. Um, so that means that the positive rate basis was off so it, it dropped down. Then the base conveyors and lid conveyors turned off. And at this point, I believe that's everything in our uh, step execution. Okay, so um, what I'll do is, I, I was gonna go through this slowly one more time, but actually you have a printout of the uh, PLC program, right? So just on the first tab here in this section, this final section of the course, there should be a PDF and you can scroll down to, uh, or print it out, and you can be able to see the uh, PLC program in detail and you'll be able to see the step execution portion. All right guys, last one. So let's go to the output uh, assignments. Okay, so output assignments is where we're actually turning on uh, our outputs. Okay, so here we have, I've just got all of the outputs um, that could happen within this scene here. So we've got move X, move Z, let me go uh, monitor here. Okay, so right now, is anything on? No, nothing's on at the moment, right? So right now it says that if step data move X is true, okay, so that means that within step data, if move X actually goes true, then I can assign that, uh, that output. So move X is Q0.0, .0. okay? If move Z within step data goes true, then I'm going to turn on Q0.1 for move Z. So it's cool, eh? If you separate everything into these functions, 
um, then really for me it really simplified uh, my program you know I just I did my operating modes I defined each step I did this step execution step execution was probably the hardest because that's where I needed a little bit of timing I don't know step definition was pretty difficult as well um, but timers were needed within the step execution and then over here at the output assignment that was really just the easiest part because I'm just literally saying when this is true this is on when this is true this is on right for this one for the grab step data grab is true grab is on q0.2 right let's see if there's anything else uh where there's some extra things that i put in here for lids conveyor um so lids conveyor i didn't want to turn on until the start mode uh was on there okay so start mode is true lids conveyor uh turn is true within step data then turn on q0.3 i'm not sure why i put that in there for the uh for the start mode for clamp lid, again, if step data clamp lid is true, then Q0.4 clamp lid is true. Uh, network six, positive raised lids. So if that was true within my step data, then Q0.5 was, was true and turned on. And then here, uh, it looks again like uh, for the basis conveyor that I wanted to make sure that I was actually in, uh, in the start mode. Okay, so start mode was true. Uh, base conveyors within step data was true. Then turn on Q0.6. Okay, uh, for the clamp base, step data clamp base was true. Q0.7 clamp base is turned on. So you can just see that each individual output has its own network. And within this data block, that Boolean value controls the output here. So um, we went to Q0.7. Next one is Q1.0 for the positive raised bases. Uh, and right now I'm in the start mode. Obviously, if I press the stop, then the start mode turns off. Right, so uh, now I just have a uh, start mode. So with not, everything else was in step data, and now my individual lights are controlled by modes. So start mode is here, turns on Q1.1 for my start light. Reset mode turns on my reset light, Q, uh, percent Q1.2. And then the stop light has uh, two portions, right? So uh, if I am not in the e-stop mode, and I'm not in the start mode, then have a solid red light on for the stop push button. If I press the E stop at some point, then obviously I'm then in the E stop mode. So this branch no longer is true, uh, but this is now true. The clock uh, memory byte and specifically this percent M.10.5 is flashing at one Hertz. And now I've got this stop push button flashing at a one Hertz interval. I pr put this back to its rest state. I'm now no longer in the E stop mode. Uh, but I'm still not in the start mode, so the stop light is now a solid red. And finally, for the uh, network 13, for the counter, um, I was debating on where to put it. I ended up putting it uh, here within the output assignments here, because it is kind of assigning an output uh, to the counter display here. Uh, and if I, uh, let's put it into automatic mode. Once I have a, uh, a part that is complete, and it goes past this final diffuse sensor here, then my count goes up by one. Beautiful, okay? And the only thing that I have here um, is that it's just uh, increasing the parts counter here, right? So um, I've got, I just put a random preset value here. Uh, so once that negative edge is true for the part leaving, and again, I have a separate memory bit here, percent M2.3, um, then that counts up my counter here. Uh, and I didn't have to use a, a move function or anything like that. It's just simply sending the value to percent QD30. Um, so for PLC SIM, that is the address that corresponds to uh, my counter there. Okay, and if we look at the drivers, then QD30 is most likely uh, an integer value. Okay, um, then finally, if I had uh, the reset push button press, uh, then the reset mode would be uh, would be true. Right, so if that reset mode was true, then it would reset my counter and I would go back to a value of zero there. All right, guys, so that covers everything within the uh, assembler. I hope and I trust that everything has uh, worked out for you guys. Um, I'm interested to see what you guys have uh, done in order to uh, make the program better. And I hope that uh, you're pleased at the end of the course with uh, with everything that we've been able to uh, accomplish together. That was a disgusting amount of uh, of work, guys. So um, take these these last videos, work away at the assembler 
right? This is our capstone project here. See if you can take everything that we've worked on so far. This basically um, takes all the different um, instructions that we've looked at in the course, incorporates them into one project here. Uh, and now we're doing the, both the automatic and the manual here and keeping track of each part that, uh, that comes by. I truly appreciate all your time and effort here, guys. Um, and I will see you guys um, on the next course. I'll keep in touch and I'll, uh, I'll let you know when I've completed the next course. And then uh, I'd love to have you uh, to take a look at it and, uh, and keep moving forward with me on this journey of understanding PLC programming. Thanks very much, guys. All the best to you guys and your family. I'll talk to you guys soon.